Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 6 of .NET Basics. In this session, we'll understand the problem of DLL hell. Now let's say, on my computer I have two applications, application A1 and A2. Both of these applications use the shared assembly, shared.dll. Now let's say I have a latest version of application A2 available on the internet. I downloaded this latest version of A2 and installed it on my computer. Now let's say this new installation of A2 has accidentally overwritten this shared assembly with a new version that came along with the download. So what happens? A2 works fine, but when I try to run A1, you know, it fails to run. Why? Because this shared assembly is not backward compatible. And how can you make an assembly not backward compatible? You know, you can do a variety of things. Okay, maybe we have removed some of the existing methods which were present there before. Or we changed the signature of the methods. Okay, so anything like this could actually break the backward compatibility nature of an assembly. So as a result of this, the existing applications stopped working, but whereas this new installation of A2 works fine. Okay, so in brief, DLL hell is a problem where one application will install a new version of the shared component that's not backward compatible with the version that's already there on the machine, causing all the other existing applications basically, you know, to fail. So with the .NET strong named assemblies, we don't have this problem of DLL hell anymore. We'll actually see how to solve this DLL hell problem in the next session. Now let's look at an example of how to, you know, simulate this DLL hell problem. So if we go back, you know, it's basically there are two applications, A1 and A2, which rely on one of the shared assemblies. So let's kind of create such an example. So let's create a new project. So file new project. And let's say Visual C Sharp console application. And let's call this A1. So I have a console application A1 as part of the solution. Let's create another console application A2. So we have two console applications at the moment. And let's say both of these applications uh, rely on a class library project. So let's add a class library project to the solution. So this time it's going to be class library project and I'm going to call this class library and let's click OK. And all this class library is going to contain is a very simple class. Maybe we'll call this sample class. And let's say I have a static method. So public static string and let's say maybe get message one. Maybe that's the original version of the method and all this method does is return a string. All right. Okay, now let's say this application A1 wants to make use of that assembly. So in order to do that, we add a reference to that assembly. Right click, add reference, and we browse to that particular project, which is present in class library, bin, debug, and class library assembly. So we are making use of that assembly in A1. Let's do the same thing for A2 as well, because both these applications, you know, use that assembly. So class library, bin, debug, assembly. And let's say in application A1, we want to make use of that class library assembly. So we import the namespace using the using statement. And then in the main method, console.writeline within that class library assembly, we know that we have got a sample class within which we have get message one. and console.readline. So let's basically do the same thing even in A2 application. So if I come to A2 application and program.cs, okay. So let's use the class library namespace. Okay. 
So now if you look at the setup here, we have two applications, A1 and A2, which rely on this class library assembly. So let's build the solution. And when I open A1 application in Windows Explorer, go into the bin debug directory, I have A1 executable and the class library assembly. Let's copy this and paste them to a separate folder. Let's say I have my application folder. Let's say, you know, when I downloaded this application from the internet, it got copied into this folder. And along the same lines, let's say I have downloaded A2 application as well from the internet, which also require the class library assembly and a2.exe. So let's say they also get copied over into my application folder. And when I paste that, so obviously it detects that, okay, sample, I mean, class library assembly is already there. Do you want to copy and replace? Let's say S for that. Now, if I run a1.exe, look at that, it works fine. So this is a1.exe. And if I run a2.exe, so both of the applications now are running fine. Because why? Both of these rely on this assembly, class library assembly. And that version is compatible with both of these two applications. Now, let's say over a period of time, you know, there were some improvements for A2 application as a result of which they also have changed uh, this class library. Let's say they, they improved this class library method instead of saying Prajim, they said in Prajim Technologies. And instead of calling it as get message one, they called it as get message two. So obviously now if I go to A2, I will say, okay, instead of get message one, it's going to be get message two. And when we build this application now, uh, let's see. Let's get rid of this one. For some reason, it's giving an error. But let's build this project. So we build the class library. And then let's re-add the reference. And now sample uh, dot get message too. So now if we build the solution and go into the debug directory, bin and debug. So we have A2 and class library. So now let's say this is like a new version of the program that I have downloaded from the internet. I'm trying to install it now. And then when I'm trying to install it, you know, let's say it get copied into the same folder. When I do this, obviously it detects that, okay, there is a class library folder. Do you want to copy and replace? And obviously if you remember when you're installing a program, you click next, next, next and finish. And just say along the same lines, I just did that, and then I copied and replaced. Now, when I run A2, because I installed, this is the new version of the application. All right, it's working fine without any issues. But then when I try to look at this, both of these applications rely on this one. A2 works fine because it's a new version of the application. And I downloaded this application. It accidentally overwrote this class library assembly, which is also used by A1.exe. But then a1.exe expects, you know, the method name to be, uh, what's that, get message one. But we have changed that to get message two. So now this assembly is no longer backward compatible. So not only a1, if there is any other application that's actually using get message one method from this assembly, all of them will basically fail now. So this is nothing but DLL hell. So if I run a1.exe, look at that, it has that, you know, missing method exception, method not found, which method is not found, get message one method is not found. So this is nothing but DLL hell. In the next session, we will actually learn how to solve this DLL hell problem. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.